Hey, hey, Waffle Gang, I do hope you're well. My name is Mark, and today we're checking out some more Am I the Butthole stories, cross with relationships as well. And if you do love a Reddit story, why not consider hitting that like, subscribe, maybe that notification bell too, as it all really helps out. And let's dive straight into today's first story. Now, today's first story comes from Am I the Arsehole Wedding Troubles, and it's titled Am I the Arsehole for Wanting My Fiance Sister Out of the Wedding? And of course, comes with an update. My fiance, 24 female, and I, 24 male, just recently got engaged. So we have started to pick out our wedding party. Yesterday, my fiance said she wanted her sister, 22 female, to be her maid of honor. Her sister lived with us for a while while she was going to college, which is near our apartment. Due to certain issues with her school's housing, we agreed to let her stay with us, as it would only be for a semester. I had only met her a few times before this, but she seemed nice. However, once she moved in with us, that's when things started. She would say things like, you would look good in that, or I wish I could find someone like you. During the few months, it divulged into her accidentally walking in on me on the shower, spilling things on me so that I have to change clothes, saying that she should be in my fiance's shoes and constantly making comments about my body. I told my fiance about these things multiple times because it made me uncomfortable, but she just kept dismissing me. I also brought these concerns to her sister, but she kept playing it off as a joke. Nothing changed, but luckily she moved out once she had to go back to the dorms. When my fiance mentioned that she wanted her sister as maid of honor, I said that I'm not comfortable with that. I told her everything I brought up before and said that her sister might try to ruin the wedding because of this huge crush, if that's even the right word, that she has on me. I also said that maybe I'd be okay with with her being involved in the wedding in some other way, but I don't feel comfortable with her being that involved and so close to both of us. I said that it's her choice, but this is how I feel about it. So my fiance said, I've told you before, this is normally how she is. I want to keep her as my maid of honor. Then I said, what if you were uncomfortable around my brother, best man? Wouldn't you want him to be out of the wedding party? She said, well, yeah, but that's your brother we're talking about, so it actually makes sense. For context, my brother is married with kids and and he is a truly nice guy. My fiance has met him plenty of times and not once has he done anything that would make her uncomfortable, nor has my fiance brought up concerns about him. So I said, what the hell is that supposed to mean? And she said, I mean, I just don't like him very much. There's nothing against him. So I told her that there is a double standard here. My brother could get kicked out of the wedding party for just my fiance not liking him, while her sister can't get kicked out of it for her practically sexually harassing me. I said that she should understand that I want our wedding to go well, so that means I just want us to enjoy ourselves without questioning if something will go wrong. She said, I get that, but having my sister as maid of honor would make me happy. I said that if she won't take my happiness into account, then I'm leaving. So as I was leaving, she told me I was an arsehole. Reddit, am I the arsehole? And we do have some comments and an update on this, which we will cover in a moment. But yeah, hell yeah, that your sister is sexually harassing you and there is clearly a double standard going on here. Just like you said, how can you be the arsehole in this situation? And I know it gets thrown around about leaving someone over something like this or not getting married to someone like this, but you gotta think about it. like. You're just about to get married and, you know, your fiance is allowing her sister to to get away with these things, classing them as like a joke. Imagine any future disagreements or anything like that. Uh, Is your very valid feelings going to be put down? That's what's going through my head right now. But let's cover a couple of those comments to see what they say. So Mivid says, my first thought is your fiance was in on this and it was all a test. No woman would even just brush it off as if nothing happened, if anyone was harassing their man in any way. Not the arsehole. And we've covered a couple of stories like that before with those tests. Interesting one. Stella Bella says, not the arsehole. Why are you marrying this woman? There are better women out there for you. The right one would never put you in this position. Mrs. Pussyfeather says, not the arsehole. The issue with her sister harassing you was never resolved. The sister moving out just made the issue go away. She didn't have your back at all and that is fucked up. Does she fob you off with other issues that come up? Smiley Canadian says, not the arsehole. You have a fiance problem and this may be the hill worth ending your relationship over. Her sis did sexually harass you. Her sister continuously sexually harassed you despite you asking her sister to stop. 
To make matters worse, your fiance completely continues to dismiss your concerns and your safety. Her sister was escalating things and I worry she would assault you. If genders were reversed, people would be outraged. What's more concerning is that your fiance is more worried about her happiness over you being repeatedly sexually harassed and constantly at risk of being sexually assaulted. No one would want to have their harasser in the wedding party. She should be fully supporting you and disinvite her sister from the wedding. You're supposed to be a team, yet she's willing to hurt you if it will make her happy. Zoom Zoom says not the arsehole. Maybe you should postpone the wedding. It sounds like you two have a bunch of issues to sort through before getting married. The communication is not good. And one more from non-binary atheist who says not the arsehole and dump your fiance. I shouldn't have to elaborate on this, but if she's dismissing the way her sister is making you feel now, wait until you're married and her sister is trying to wedge herself between you. It'll get pinned on you and you'll be the bad guy. Also, if the roles were reversed, you can bet friends and family would have an issue with this. Sometimes this just helps put things into perspective. It's a serious issue either way. Now, let's move on to the update to see what happens next. So the update says, it's been a little over a month since I last posted here and many people have been asking me for some updates. After seeing all the responses, I realized I was not the arsehole, which I was unsure of from the beginning. The day after I posted, I called my fiance to see if we could meet up to talk and she agreed. During our meetup, I decided to tell her about the post, which she was somewhat shocked about. I mentioned that the comments were eye-opening for me and I realized that she has never taken my feelings into account, not just with the wedding. I said that she has practically put her sister before me on many occasions, even with my concerns. She said that she understood, but she feels that her feelings mattered more here. She said that this is her family I am judging, and since she is the woman in the relationship, her emotions should be catered to. I asked her why this can't be the reverse for me when discussing my family, but she couldn't give me an explanation for that. I said that this incident was the tipping point for me, and since she wouldn't apologize for what happened, then things will not work out for us. I asked my ring back, which she did with no emotions and nothing else to say, and I walked out. I have to admit, the holidays were a little rough for me, but I had a lot of family and friends that were there for me. Over time, I, I grew to learn that this was just a bump in the road and that I should move on. I plan to start dating again, so wish me luck. Holy moly, what an update. The fact that she showed no emotion at all when she handed it over and said her feelings are basically more important than yours. Can we say bullet dodged on that one? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and let's move on to another story. And our next story comes from a throwaway account titled, am I the asshole for kicking my daughter out because she ruined her stepsister's things and, and makes life difficult in the house. I have two daughters, Leanne, 19 female, and Lucy, 16 female. I adore my girls, but since I remarried Rebecca fairly soon after the divorce, they weren't impressed especially since I gained a stepdaughter, Sophie, 18 female. I did my best, but they remain closer to their mother to this day. And when the lockdowns first started, they wished to stay with her and communicate with me through tech. Clarification, because everyone was asking, I did not cheat. My ex-wife, Sharon, has been struggling since the pandemic. Money is tight for both her and her boyfriend, Luke, and with them and both girls there, there's not a lot of space. Leanne especially is coping very poorly and Sharon asked if I was willing to have her for a short while, apparently at Leanne's request. I was surprised by this since she was the one who felt most negatively towards me after the divorce. And we recently had a big fight because she dropped out of university. So I agreed knowing that it would be tough. But her behavior hasn't been acceptable. She's rude to Rebecca. She frequently takes clothes of Sophie's. She says she and Lucy share things all the time, but their relationship and attitudes to clothes is different. Sophie's wardrobe is essentially sacred to her for reasons I don't have the word count to explain, but can in the comments if deemed relevant. Leanne also makes a lot of noise, symptom of her mother's household, swears a lot, is messy and very aggressive when she doesn't get her way or is rebuked for her behavior, particularly if it's Rebecca that says something. Tensions have been rising lately because Sophie was due to start university again today. Leanne and I fought about this as I mentioned, so it was a delicate subject regardless. And with Leanne's noise disturbance, Sophie has found it difficult to concentrate on her prep work, so they've been arguing even more. Sophie bought a new shirt and necklace for her first meeting today, 
Her new outfit for a specific event is Sophie code for, I'm stressed about this. The idea of an online term is quite daunting. Today, she went to get dressed and found the blouse ripped apart and the necklace destroyed on her bed. She started crying. There was a big fight. Rebecca calmed Sophie down in time for her class and I sent Leanne to her room and told her to stay there until her mother arrives to pick her up. Not just the vandalism, but the fact that she deliberately searched for the items she knew Sophie had chosen to calm herself down for her class was just too much for me. I've said I'm happy to take Lucy if space is still an issue, but Leanne can't live in my house if she's going to destroy her stepsister's property and make life difficult for everyone. Sharon, Luke and Leanne all say I'm the arsehole for putting them in this position and not prioritizing Leanne because she's my daughter. They won't pick her up. So, am I the arsehole? And there was a relevant comment about that wardrobe. So, Sophie became very ill aged around 15. She spent about a year in recovery and although she's still affected by it, she functions essentially normally now. She's a very ambitious girl and wouldn't hear of taking a year off school, even if she was at her worst. That year, she was doing her GCSEs, which are important exams, so she couldn't take it easy either. To get the grade she wanted, she had to work very hard and there was a point where all she had the energy to do was study and sleep. She was highly stressed, but asking her to rest only stressed her out more. During this time, she got into running an aesthetic Tumblr blog page. I think that's right. If, if I phrase that like a complete dad, I apologize to any youth's reading. <laughs> but it was nice and calming and didn't require a lot of energy. She would spend her pocket money on clothes and things to her room to match the aesthetic on her blog, organizing her room, dressing up, etc. Basically kept her sane while she still couldn't do normal teenage things. And that's how she would cope when she was stressed about her exams. I think it gave her some control as well. She didn't have much independence or privacy as a teenage girl wants because she was so ill. She associates it with family as well. We were obviously frantic during this period and so when she was actually showing interest in something, we were keen to participate. She and her mum went thrifting together lots for clothes. Of course, they can't now and I helped her redecorate her room. She learned how to sew from her grandma and many of the items she or her grandma have made or edited, is edited the right word? I don't know. So many of the items have sentimental value. But we're gonna start off with Nixie who says everyone sucks here or multiple people suck here. Well, Leanne is being a total nightmare. She's 19 and it sounds like stuff in her life has been awful for a while. You're her dad and it sounds like kicking her out of her home was step one of discipline. She's clearly been an issue for a while. Why isn't she in therapy? What consequences has her behavior had so far? What have you done to work through this? You don't even mention why she dropped out of university. Same questions go for her mom. In my opinion, kicking your kids out should be the last resort. You should have tried everything else first and your post just doesn't sound like you have. Plant mother says you're the asshole. Not a major one, but nevertheless an asshole. Your daughter is acting out for a reason and it sounds like your new wife and yourself need to make her more of a priority. Get to know her and understand why she is acting out. Divorce is super hard no matter the age and I'm not sure she's wishing you would come to her defense as quickly as you did for Sophie, a girl who is not even your daughter. Mariah Lulu says, wow, not the asshole. Your daughter is an adult. Her stepsister would be well in her right to sue her at this point. She chose to be evil. Your ex doesn't want to pick her up. No worries, put her in an Uber and put conditions on her for coming back if you ever consider letting her. Apologies, therapy, and strict respect of your rules and your stepsister's space, and paying for what she destroyed or replacing it. Your daughter is way too old to act like a toddler, in my opinion. Edit, please don't take my mention of suing as an indication she should be taken to court, but rather that she reached the age where destroying someone's property can get her into real issues. Property destroyed and harassment can get you in adult troubles. And let's have one more from Double Stitch who says, let me emphasize because other Redditors have focused on the potential dynamics of your divorce and on step sibling rivalries. Your action here is age appropriate parenting. Leanne is over 18, refuses to follow house rules, is rude and messy, steals from Sophie and destroyed Sophie's new belongings in a malicious action targeted to cause maximum distress. In the adult world, actions have consequences. If you tolerate this under your roof, then it would set up Leanne and her future roommates for disaster. If Leanne treated an adult in an apartment share the way she treats Sophie, then Leanne could end up in small claims court, plus a police report for vandalism and a civil restraining order. 
Although it's unlikely the vandalism would be prosecuted, these are things that could turn up on a background check. The mildest way to curb that behavior before it creates a public record is to make Leanne move in with other relatives. You're pursuing that course. She won't be on the streets. She'll resent you for it in the short run. Leanne is living in the moment. 10 years from now, when Leanne has a bit more life experience, she may understand why you demonstrated that boundaries matter. You also owe a reasonable home environment to Sophie so she can focus on her studies without abuse. Not the asshole. So we have a couple of updates on this one. The first one says, thanks to all the comments with all the judgments. Since Sharon wouldn't come and get her and I didn't want her taking public transport right now, Leanne stayed the night. She didn't come out of her room, but Rebecca brought her dinner and I brought her breakfast this morning. Pan au chocolat, which is her favorite, so kind of a peace offering. I decided to take the advice of the comments about trying to parent her instead of just kicking her out, especially since I had time to cool down. I told her that if she wanted to stay there, there would have to be some ground rules. She needed to apologize to Sophie and pay her back the full amount for the items. If she wanted to borrow things, she had to ask politely first and accept the answer she was given. And she had to make an effort to clean up after herself and be polite and respectful around the house. Leanne agreed and she went out to apologize to Sophie and asked her how much the items cost. This caused another fight because the blouse was expensive and she didn't want to pay it back. Thank you very much for the comment about bringing it back to the absolute. I'll try and find it again because that was very helpful. It doesn't matter whether you've paid that much for a shirt, you destroyed someone else's property and you'll have to reimburse them fully. It was repeated a lot. Leanne agreed and although she was sulky about it, she had been better behaved for the rest of the morning and afternoon. She's currently playing on the Switch after asking Sophie and has called Sharon to let her know that all is currently fine. Some other loose threads. Number one, I mentioned therapy in the conversation with her. I bring it up again with Sharon present, probably because I think it would be a good idea. She didn't seem opposed when I mentioned it. Two, to all the people that are honestly angry that I helped Sophie redecorate her room because she was seriously ill, fuck you honestly. It doesn't matter that she's not my blood. If you had a daughter, step or otherwise in that situation, you definitely would have done what you could. As for a real dad doing it, trust me, her real dad is thankfully not allowed to see her. Second update. Hello Reddit, I got a lot more response on my original post than I ever expected, so I thought I would write an update. Leanne has been living with myself, Rebecca and Sophie for around a month now. Even though lots of people saw from where I was originally coming from and voted not the asshole, many everyone sucks here voters gave me a bit of a wake up call as to how Leanne was still my daughter and I could try to parent her instead of just sending her back to her mother. So that's what we've been trying to do. During a row a week ago, Leanne destroyed an ornament of Rebecca's. I should clarify that it was in the heat of the moment and she apologized immediately so, while still inexcusable, better than what she did to Sophie. She apologized to Rebecca and they had a chat where they got into why Leanne breaks things when she's angry. Leanne says she doesn't really know. Her and I then had a talk where I laid out the consequences of doing this in later life. She understands the severity of it and two days ago, we signed her up for some online therapy sessions so she can try and work it out before it causes her a real problem. A lot of you suggested family therapy because Leanne has a lot of anger about the divorce. Sharon is flat out refusing to go. If I bring it up more, she, she might soften on the idea over time. But honestly, I wouldn't be shocked if she never agrees. I will give the issue some time and see how Leanne gets on with the individual therapy. But I'm preparing myself for the possibility of Leanne and myself going alone. It's definitely been difficult with its ups and downs, but I've been trying to step up and I can really see an improvement in her behavior. She has a lot less messy and we don't usually have to remind her to clean up after herself anymore. She has been making more effort about noise and, and is far more polite to Rebecca and Sophie. She also agreed to do some family things that she wouldn't before. She joins us for Sunday TV nights, which I like a little tradition we do, and she and Sophie play on the Switch together sometimes now. I'm very glad I took the advice to try this because it's great to see her better adjusted and taking steps to improve herself. We also talked about her dropping out of uni. I was upset about it and even more upset that she didn't even seem to take it seriously but Leanne said that she'd been beating herself up about it. I was quite shocked because as soon as the conversation went down this route, she started crying. She said that me flipping out really upset her because it confirmed her own negative thoughts and that she was actually really depressed and uncertain about her future. 
We have been researching potential careers together and she is less scared now and doing as much as she can to prepare for some of the things she wants to try once the pandemic is over. Thank you again for all the help. And I'm glad OP took that step that they did, you know, to parent their child. Yes, they're 19, but obviously there's a lot of shit that's gone on that we haven't seen in the, in the middle here. And whenever we read about blended families, they've always been very difficult to navigate regardless of age. And although, yes, it's never an excuse for being an arsehole, as we always say, I'm glad to see that Leanne is getting some help and it sounds like she was calling out for her dad to be helping her in some way. I don't know. What do you guys make of this one? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And just a huge thank you for spending your time with me today, getting involved in the channel. Your love, support, and time always means the world to me. Thank you so much. And I will see you in the next one. Take care, guys. Much love. Wake up, get up, stretch my legs, eat some breakfast, milk and eggs, brush my teeth up, wash my face, throw my clothes on, start my day. Wake up, I can smell the smoke from the bacon. Let's go, see the sun shining from the windows.